The report insinuates some serious allegations against Sandra. It attacks our integrity and professional conduct. Alpha makes unsubst unsubstantiated allegations of collusion, corruption, etc., based on the false finding of this report. The conclusion of this report only serves the objective of Alta, namely to discredit Sandra and Sandra's integrity. On the 23rd of March this year, uh, Sandra requested Alta to substantiate its claims of irregularities in the construction and management of the Howden Freeway Improvement Project and to, prov to provide all information, including detailed engineering reports, research and financial calculations on which the allegations contained in their report are based. Sad to say that to date, that information has not been received. Alta implies that Sandra is corrupt, incompetent, and has colluded with the construction industry in, the, in their published research report. The collusive practices and just common knowledge were dealt with by the competition authorities, but they are also being dealt uh, with by government, including Sandra. There are misstatements in their own report. They state the project length to be 185 kilometers versus the actual 201 kilometers. They've used 11 reference studies. The first one is the Nederland Impact Study. Now, this was a study commissioned in Europe, and the, the reason for this study was um, to determine what they referred to the internalization of external cost for the purposes of a road user charge. It incorrectly extracts the construction costs in Europe and base its calculations on these values in millions of euro instead of billions, as is stated in the study. That in itself is a hundred thousand percent, or almost a hundred thousand percent mistake. If we use Alta's own calculations, but we insert the correct uh, values in billions and not millions, uh, the GFIP is in fact 99.7 percent cheaper than the comparable European costs. The second report is the USA Kansas study. It's actually the Washington DOT report. Um, and this case study states the following about construction in, in cost in estimates in urban areas. When it comes to very large complicated projects, the significant variations in scope and uh, setting for each project limit the usefulness of the state to state comparisons. The biggest factors in variations is structures and interchanges. Projects that have structures and interchanges have, have a much higher cost per lane mile. And of the 32 projects studied, 13 of them had cost in excess of $10 million. That's now $2,004 per lane mile. The common denominator for these projects was that they included interchanges, major structures, expensive right of way, and complex soil and site conditions. That is the description that the GFIP fits into. Um, but none of this was considered in the, the report, although they used this particular study. So just using that study, if we are using the, the lowest figure for the 13 relevant projects, that's the $10 million per lane mile, and applying the exchange rate conversions the same way that Alta did, um, the study derived cost amounts to 43 million per lane kilometer, just converting mile back to kilometer. This is equivalent to 387 million per center line kilometer when applying the, the outer logic, where they say the GFIP is about nine lines on average wide. Um, so it's 43 times nine, and that gives you the 387 million. Alta in their own report of their own calculations said that the GFIP per center line kilometer costed 88 million. So this is basically four times as much. If you take the 33 um, projects in, in this particular study, the range from the lowest to the highest project that was used in the study uh, is 2,146%, meaning that the cheapest study compared to the most extensive study differs with 2,146%. So there's a danger in using averages, not taking in consideration what the applicable project is. The basis for the quantities that were used, and as I've said, they've used the incorrect length of the project and 
incorrect number of concrete works and all of those things. Um, but it's not provided, nor it is substantiated. Um, they haven't included professional fees. Um, but then the calculation, or their own calculation, gets to an overexpenditure of 152%. So in between the international benchmark studies and the one done by themselves, there's basically a 100% difference. Their own is half of that than what um, they use the, the international benchmark studies. And the question is then, but which one is right and which one is wrong? The one is double the other one. However, they prefer to rather use the 321% uh, um, end result than their own calculation done by their own expert. But the question that arises is that this project has gone to court five different times, if you will, twice to the Constitutional Court. So the question that arises is that why is there such an insistence? Why is there such an insistence from this organization called Outlaw to try and question and denigrate the integrity of some? There are numbers that you've seen over there. They've confused millions of billions. They have taken various ranges of the projects, but they have not been truthful in indicating to any one of us over here their variation. Their own expert calculation shows that it's only 150%, 152%. But why do they go ahead for the headline grabbing 321%? Now we can show you very clearly that what they had done so could be regarded as a deliberate misrepresentation. And I think one needs to question this. Is there a different motive for Alta to do this as opposed to trying to say that we should be actually encouraging, encouraging respect for the laws of our country? But what do they do instead? They encourage lawlessness.